Hey friends! Does anybody remember back in November of 2020, uh, the US had a presidential election? It took four days to find out who won. I think it was a guy named Joe Biden. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, on the 24th of April, 2022, that was just a couple days ago, France copied us and had their own presidential election. By the time the polls closed, we knew who won. What the heck? Does that mean France is actually better than the US at democracy? Of course not. The US is always number one. So let's compare, contrast, and find out what the frogs are doing wrong. Now the first obvious difference is the size of the two countries both in terms of landmass and population. The US covers a total of six time zones, including Alaska and Hawaii, while France barely spans across one. In 2020, the US had roughly 330 million citizens that cast 158 million ballots. Compare that to the land of Baguette with 68 million citizens that cast 35 million ballots. We could send information across the world in the blink of an eye, so distance really shouldn't matter that much. And a higher population will mean more votes, but it also should mean more people counting the votes. So the size argument kind of falls flat with me. Maybe there's a difference between how the two countries count votes. Both the U.S. and France are constitutional republics, and representative democracy, but that's about where the similarities end. In France, the presidential election was a single contest. People only have one choice to make, and poll workers only have one race to count. In stark contrast, when people in the United States vote for president, they're also voting for Congress, judges, sheriff, local and state representatives along with whatever local ordinance or funding bills that came up that year, all of which takes time to count. Both countries almost exclusively use volunteer labor to count the votes. France has used the same voting system for generations. With a small exception for people in jail who vote by mail, all French voters cast ballots in person on election day at their assigned polling stations. No mail-in ballots, no early voting. And it's been that way with little change for decades, so poll workers know what to do and where to go, making training people both less frequent and much easier when it is necessary. But it's far from a perfect system, and once voting begins, there is little anyone could do to change the process along the way. In the good old US of A, we have 50 states with 50 different voting systems. Often, individual counties make their own ballots with different rules for polling stations. So if someone gets sick in an area, that area is down one person, no replacements from the next county over. It also virtually ensures there will always be at least a few areas where poll workers have zero experience working with a brand new system, making delays inevitable. Elections in France are centralized. The Ministry of the Interior makes all technical preparations for elections and develops and distributes ballots across the country. When voters walk into the polling station, they show their ID, sign a paper next to their name, are handed an envelope. When they enter the polling booth, they pick a card with the name of the person they want as president, stuff it in the envelope, drop it in a large transparent box and they are done. Periodically the box is brought to a secure room in the back of the polling station where the counting happens. The envelopes are opened and the cards are emptied into two piles. One for each candidate and every card is counted by hand. After every 100 ballots counted, an official calls the pollster to report the results. Most polls close at 7, but some in larger cities stay open till 8. 
Other than closing times, polling stations have the exact same rules, allowing poll workers the freedom to move from station to station as needed with no extra training. The entire process is simple, robust, and efficient. All of this means that with the help of some fancy maths, pollsters have been able to correctly predict the winner of every contest by 8 p.m. election night. That's impressive considering France still uses the metric system. Like I said before, every state is different, but basically to vote in the United States, first you need to wait in a big long line. Eventually, you get to walk inside the building and tell the old lady your name and address or show your ID. Someone checks your name off a list and off you go to vote, either with paper ballot or a computer with a paper receipt. Either way, from there the ballots are taken to accounting sites and processed in big batches, all within the sites of the ever-present poll watchers. Poll watchers are an extra step of security required in every state. They are usually individuals appointed by political parties to observe the election process and keep an eye out for cheetahs. In a lot of states in the U.S., you can also choose to vote by mail. I actually found out doing research for this video, the months leading up to the 2020 election there was a lot of people getting sick. In response, the states decided to quickly expand their voter by mail or absentee ballot system to keep illness from spreading. But absentee votes require a different system for securely counting ballots. So all of a sudden, states needed to redesign their vote by mail system to accommodate hundreds of thousands, if not millions of mail-in ballots. Again, every state is different, but basically when you vote by mail, you stuff your ballot in an envelope and you put that envelope in another envelope with your name on it. And you drop that off at a mailbox or voter drop box, depending on what state you live in. Counting the ballots, however, can be a very long and tedious process. For reasons of voter anonymity, the person who opens the first envelope with the voter's name on it cannot open the second envelope with the ballot in it. And the ballot itself cannot be counted by anyone who handled either envelopes. Often each envelope also has to be scanned through a machine and checked for irregularities before it is handed to the next processor meaning every vote needs to pass through three people who all need different training and three separate machines. An illness, injury, breakdown, or malfunction can completely stop the pro counting process for that line of workers and equipment. Even if everything goes according to plan, absentee ballots take around three times as long to count compared to ballots completed at the voting booth. Now, considering millions more people voted by mail in the United States than ever before, this is probably a pretty good candidate as to why it took so long to count the votes in 2020. I hear what you're saying. Absentee ballots start coming in weeks before the election day. Why don't they just start counting them early? Well, that's exactly what some of the states did. But not all states were able to change their laws, and some of them didn't think it would be a good idea. 17 states had statutes or 2020 specific rules that say absentee ballots cannot be counted until after polls close on election day. That brings us to the next problem American pollsters had to deal with. Because there was not an even split between Republicans and Democrats among mail-in votes, they cannot rely on their fantasy math tricks to predict any of the races with certainty. Here, I, I found some old guy talking about it. I don't, I don't know who he is, but sounds like he knows what he's talking about. You're going to have a situation, I suspect, in states like Pennsylvania, um, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, other states, where they are going to be receiving huge amounts of mail-in ballots. And unlike states like Florida or Vermont, they're not being able for bad reasons, to begin processing those ballots 
until, I don't know, election day or maybe when the polls close. That means you're going to have states dealing with perhaps millions of mail-in ballots. Here is my worry. What polls show and what studies have shown is that for whatever reason, Democrats are more likely to use mail-in ballots. Republicans are more likely to walk into polling booths on election day. It is likely that the first votes that will be counted will be those people who came in on election day, which will be Republican. And here is the fear, and I hope everybody hears that. It could well be, now, I don't know what's going to happen, nobody does, but it could well be that at 10 o'clock on election night, Trump is winning in Michigan, he's winning in Pennsylvania, he's winning in Wisconsin, and he gets on the television, he says, thank you Americans for re-electing me, it's all over, have a good day. But then the next day, and the day following, all of those mail-in ballots start getting counted, and it turns out that Biden has won those states. At which point Trump says, see, I told you the whole thing was fraudulent. I told you those mail-in ballots were crooked. And I got, you know, we're not going to leave office. So that is a worry that I and, I and a lot of people have. And then they did dumps. They call them dumps, big, massive dumps. And they did these massive dumps. I don't know, maybe they're involved. But how people are allowed to get away from this stuff, with this stuff is unbelievable. This election was rigged. This election was a total fraud. One of the candidates making allegations of fraud that might also cause some delays. Of course, here in the land of freedom and hamburgers, it's not just a simple popularity contest. We have the great electoral college. Every state is allowed to appoint a number of electors equal to the number of senators plus representatives sent to Congress. In other words, it's two electors per state plus no more than one for every 745,000 people living in that state. In the race for president, the only thing that matters is the electoral college. We don't actually vote for president. We vote for the person we want our state to vote for. And again, every state is different, but most states give all their electors to one candidate. So in a tight race, just one or two states having delays can hold up the process for the entire country. The US and France obviously have different philosophies when it comes to counting votes and voter security. The cheese-eating surrender monkeys have one government office, the Ministry of Interior, that handles all French elections, and they've been doing basically the same thing for every election for over 60 years. The French are stuck in their ways when it comes to voting. They may have figured out a good system, but it'll never get any better. Here, in Freedom Land, we are always trying to make things better. This is doubly true when it comes to our elections. Unfortunately, this means some of the rules change every few years. Sometimes it makes the count faster, other times slower. So, is France actually better than the US at democracy? Well, it seems like the frogs are faster at announcing a winner, but does that really make it better? Inauguration is only 10 days after the elections in France. What's the hurry? The US waits two months just to make sure the election was fair and legal. Uh, also because the rules were written before the telegraph. But still, the French seem to trust their government to keep everything fair. And the government keeps the trust by making the voting process as simple and transparent as possible. I guess it works for them. In these United States, trust in the government and understanding of our electoral process are in short supply. So changing voting rules, even a little, is an easy way for politicians to convince the people they're making things better. Sometimes the change is an improvement, other times it just complicates and confuses the process. And in the worst cases, it actually suppresses people's ability to vote. 
the improvements are usually adopted by other states. The overly complicated and voter suppression changes are usually overturned by the next politically opposing administration. The trend in recent decades is for states to become politically partisan, meaning for one reason or another, more of the bad and cumbersome laws start piling up and it becomes less and less likely we will actually have a smooth running national election. I think that is just our process of change. Over the long term and across the whole country, I think this creates a self-improving process. Even if many of the individual changes are counterproductive, our 50 state system is constantly motivated to make improvements. Even if it is a glacially slow process. The United States of America is going through some growing pains right now. But as long as it doesn't kill us, it will make us stronger. It is but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. But well, what's that then? I've heard worse. Political winds change faster than anyone expects. One day, our democracy will be popular again, and some of the most repressive states will become the most free. <laughs> well, that's my hope anyway. I guess this was all just a long way of saying that the French have a system that's set up to be fast and efficient, and if the people don't like it, they better hope the person who wins changes things for the better. The U.S. has this weird, multi-layered governmental system set up to change however the people desire, and right now there's a lot of people who desire change in this country. 2020 won't be the last contested election. It's like the great Marcel Marceau once said. Hey friends, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that the Falklands belongs to Argentina.